It talks about a one world government, the image of the beast seen everywhere by everybody at the same time. That's television. Holograms, they say it's it's three dimensional. Uh, you, you can't have it without buying and you know, buying and selling. You got to have this mark. I, I know it's happening and I know the force of this world is satanic and wants us killing each other and is evil. So I believe in the devil and I believe in the Bible. I'm just saying Christ even talks about in the Bible. Not everybody's supposed to understand this. Well, maybe I'm profane. Maybe I don't understand it. Maybe you do. Well, just this morning, we had the headlines that Paul Ryan was pushing tax increases, but now the Republicans are giving a press conference, the House and Senate leadership, the usual suspects that the president wanted a 15 percent corporate tax that'd be one of the lowest in the world instead of the highest and that uh they're going to give him 20 and they claim they have a deal we'll see if they get it rammed through the house and the senate and i'm all about cutting our tax so it's lower than china's corporate rate so the tens of trillions of dollars outside the country comes back in that is a tax cut for all americans major incentive more important than even cutting regulations at this point that would be a shot in the arm they th th I mean they wrote the laws so the jobs would go outside the country so that's even as big as turning our coal back on but what i really want to see is a middle class tax cut and not because i'll get a little bit more money i haven't even paid myself this year i am putting everything back into the operation i want to win against the globalist to have a future but i know that just the idea that taxes might get cut under Obama, the average person making $200,000 a year pays 45%. That means you're keeping like $105,000. And folks, <laughs> it's the middle class that buys most of the stuff and creates the economy. The people that have discretionary income, you, you cut that 45%. You know, if, if you go back to 30, 35, something like that, I mean, you're talking about hundreds of billions of dollars of people that don't hoard it they spend it on restaurants and cars and buying boats getting their hair done and going on vacations and i mean that's the people we need with the money the plan calls for cutting the corporate tax right from 35 to 20 percent the gop proposed also calls for reducing the number of tax brackets from seven to three with a surcharge on the wealthiest americans as long as they're not exempt i'm so sick of these Rich guy taxes, and then they write loopholes to get out of it. Like where, oh, but if you move over short seas, then you're, you know, not, you know, you don't have to pay it. So what do they say? The devil is always in the details. Trump's always late, which is fine. He builds expectation. He was set to speak six minutes ago. We'll try to go to that as soon as he does it. But let's start going to your calls. Dan, Zach, Timothy, Ryan, Bruce. They're all on the NFL. And again, the NFL is a diversion. But them picking their fight over the NFL trying to make their move to turn us all into SJWs. It failed big, and this is a big victory, and the, the slobs at the NFL are now in full retreat. So Trump wins again. We win again. This is a big one. Uh, Dan in Indiana, you're on the air. Welcome. Yes, I want to talk about one reason. One reason they can take a knee, and then 10 signs at the end times and why the rapture is relevant. You yes. You want to hear that? Okay, they should take the knee in the Lord's Prayer. That's what they should be taking the knee for. And then the ten signs of the end times is wars and rumors of wars, and you can find that in Matthew 24, 6, 7. Then you got famine, famine pestilence, and earthquake. Find that in Matthew 24, 7, 8. Then you have... Uh, Sir, I agree with you. I think we're seeing a lot of biblical stuff right now. Well, you asked why we got all this stuff happening, and it's predicted that this will happen. And then the rapture is uh, relevant because uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, and that's uh, chapter uh, verse 16, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the archangel call, and with the sound of the trumpet, magic that of God and the dead of Christ will rise first and then Well let me say this it's open to interpretation lives. my brother but let me say this I hope for pre prepare for post I'm sure you've heard that No I have Well I listen 
I know it's in the Bible. I know it talks about a rapture of, of God's people, and I sure hope that's the case. But when have God's people been raptured before when evil comes upon them? Well, why can't you believe in this version of, of what? Uh, uh, listen, it's very on. complex, and, and I know it's and I know it. It talks about a one world government, the image of the beast seen everywhere by everybody at the same time. That's television holograms. They say it's it's three dimensional. Uh, you you can't have it without buying and you know buying and selling. You got to have this mark. I I know it's happening, and I know the force of this world is satanic and wants us killing each other and is evil. So I believe in the devil and I believe in the Bible. I'm just saying. Christ even talks about in the Bible, not everybody's supposed to understand this. Well, maybe I'm profane. Maybe I don't understand it. Maybe you do. You, you're saying we're going to have to go through the tribulations, but I don't see nowhere it says that believers got to go through the tribulation. And I've been a believer for a long time, and nowhere in my Bible says the church will suffer at the hands of Satan. It actually says he blood. will make war against the saints and overcome them. It says immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened. My, my friend, you know, I don't want to debate this with you, Dan, but, but let's come back and spend a few more minutes on it. Because I know, I, I agree, the Bible doesn't contradict itself, but it's very complex. Look, I'm not going to sit here and biblically fight with people over their interpretations of the Bible. That's why we got thousands of denominations. If you love God and you hate the devil and you love children, you want to be a good person, you love Jesus Christ, and you say you accept him as your savior, you're saved. People say faith without works is dead. Absolutely. If you're but it is like you have to do the works to get saved. If you are saved, you're gonna be doing the works. And it doesn't mean I'm on some high horse and I'm perfect. <laughs> I just pray every day that God make me not be aggressive, angry, hateful, nasty. I mean, <laughs> believe me, but that's, in a way, it's not a gift, but I can see into the enemy because, you know, I, I, I have, I have, I'm fallen. You know, I love God, but I'm fallen. And, and so I can, you know, basically look into how these guys are operating. But I sat there in a lot of Sunday school. I don't remember all the verses or all the books. Daria is kind of the Bible uh, expert. She goes to church like four or five nights a week and goes out in missionaries all over Texas. And, uh, but, you know, she goes over it. But I, I just know it says they come, they defeat the devil in Armageddon, they bind him up, and the dead in Christ are raised, and, you know, all the rest of it. But she just pulled up a bunch of Bible verses. And then, Dan, I'm going to hurry quicker and let you have your response. But let's put one of these verses on screen for folks. This is out of the King James Version. We had it on just for the break. We can throw that up. This is Matthew 24, 29, 30. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall be the sun darkened and the moon shall not give light and the stars shall have fallen from the heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and glory. And that's repeated. It's not like it contradicts, it's repeated over and over again. And this whole pre-tribulation thing is about 200 years old and you know you can say it's an apostasy in the church or whatever. The Catholics push it now. Everybody pushes it. The Protestants push it. But you go into the lion's den. You go into the fiery furnace. You you go into the confrontation. That separates the wheat from the chaff, the metal, the metal from the garbage. And I agree. We're seeing world government. We're seeing things. World government. You know, mark of the beast. It's all happening. They're trying to make everybody in Sweden take chips right now to get on trains. It's here. So I'd say. Praise the Lord, Dan, it shows it's all real and true, and, you know, what our gut and spirit tells us is right. But this big debate about we're not going to have to take our licks and stand up for God, and I'm not going to refuse Christ. They put a gun to my head or put me in a guillotine. Pull that lever. I'm not, <laughs> that, that, that's a pleasure to do for God because it's just a second of pain and eternity, you know, with the Creator, and that's all I want. Uh, but, uh, Daria, you were going to make a comment. Daria, go ahead. Well, yeah, you just pretty much already said it, but the Bible is very clear to when the question arises on where the rapture, when the rapture, the rapture event happens. It says then uh, that after the after the the sun and the moon go dark, and and it says when does it happen? And it says immediately after the tribulation. So I mean that's pretty clear, and it and it, that it describes that event several times. The Bible mirrors each other several times as to when the question arises, when the tribulation, when the rapture happens. Uh, it always says after the tribulation, when the sun and the and the moon go dark. So thank you, Daria. Uh, wish you'd go on camera, but you're not. Let's go ahead and go to Dan. Dan, I'm not trying to beat you up. 
but you just said nowhere in the Bible does it say it. We always pull up everything we talk about, so there it is. Can I can I respond to yes, that? Yes, sir. It also said is he's going to come as a thief in the night. It has nothing to do with the sun turning black. You won't know the day of the hour. Uh, when you hear people saying uh, peace and safety, then sudden destruction will come upon you. You yes. want to know uh, he... uh, times where God delivered his people? Look at Noah. The thief in, in, in the night that. refers to the fact that no man knows when that event is going to happen, but we know that it's happening when the sun and the moon go dark, and that's, that happens after the tribulation. But when exactly that's going to happen, no one knows, and that's what it says, that, it, that, it comes, that he comes in as a thief in the night. That's what it's referring to. Well, I think you're taking it out of t contact because uh, my belief says the rapture comes before uh, the church even have any uh, part of the tribulation. And then uh, Christ, when he suffered at the cross, he took all the stripes and the pain and the suffering in place of the church so we don't have to go through a tribulation. He suffered on the cross in place of us. Okay, so why do you have to go through a tribulation? You got a martyr's complex, what I believe. You got you want to prove something before God. No, uh, saying that Christ suffered on the cross so that something. you can get eternal life if you accept him as your savior. That was the whole point of him suffering on the cross. It has nothing to do with the worldly tribulations on this earth. All I know is I got the globalists coming after me because I'm, I'm, I'm not against Christ. So all I know, but but I, I hear what here's the thing. Let's just all say we love God, and that we hate the devil, and and that and that and we're together, and we and we can debate this all day. But hey, world governments here that the Bible told us the mark of the beast. They're pushing it. How about that, Dan? Let's just say we're right about that. We all agree on that. Like stuff's getting biblical, right? Well, if you hire me to be your infowars uh, theologian and pull out the scripture on your show on a daily basis, I'll say I'll agree to that. All right. Well, shoot some YouTube videos and show us what you're doing. But you sound like a smart guy. Let me tell you something. I like the idea of getting beamed out of here and not having to deal with this with my kids. If God showed up right now and said, you and your kids and your wife, you want out of here right now? I'd be like, Let's get, I want out of here right now. <laughs> but, but I just don't see that happening to Moses or to Jesus or anybody else. We got to go through this. But hey, I hope you're right. Uh, thank you, Dan. Uh, Daria, closing comment? Well, yeah, I think it's unfortunate that most of the churches in the country, even among the fundamental Baptist churches, who are really were the last standing in terms of um, teaching the Bible, the Bible, what the Bible says, and it's, it's just really unfortunate that we don't have really the churches who t teach the Bible anymore and what the, the Word of God really says. Well, I'm no rocket scientist, but the Bible's pretty clear. The, the beast wages war against the saints and overcomes them. Yeah, and they 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 uh, they worry about their attendance more than they worry about. But how do they get out of the beast wages war against the saints and overcomes them? Exactly. I mean, how do you get over that? Sorry, can you repeat that? No, I'm, I don't even have any audio in there. I'm saying if the beast wages war against us and overcomes us as a test, but then it causes the biggest revival ever like Martin Luther King or Gandhi getting beat up, that's basically what it is on a mass scale. I mean, how is that not clear to Christians? The beast is coming after us, and you're going to choose to kiss his ass, or you're going to choose to go through the fire. Everybody, It's not a martyr's complex. I'm not looking for any more pain, but it's very clear. You're going to go through this, or you're going to join the devil. Yeah, exactly, and that's the whole test. That's the whole point of us being here on earth is this eternal struggle struggle between good and evil between satan and god and god did suffer on the cross for us he sacrificed himself god jesus christ is the trinity uh jesus christ the son so that god couldn't say he wasn't didn't have flesh in the game i'm sorry say again so that god so you couldn't say god didn't have flesh in the game Oh, absolutely. So he, God, he actually sacrificed himself for us to give us eternal life. And all we have to do is a free gift. You don't have to work for it. It's not a work salvation. It's a salvation completely by faith. All you have to do is that you do accept him to say you do accept him as your savior and you're saved forever. It can't be taken away from you. It's a free gift. And the Bible says that. And if it wasn't real, why would the UN and the Satanists 
and all of them hate it so much. I'm sorry, say again. Uh, I know there's, you, you don't have your headphones on. Yeah, it's just delayed. I don't have to. No, no, I understand. If it wasn't powerful, why would the whole world government system be against it? Well, yeah, absolutely, because the word, the, the Bible and the word of God is the most powerful tool we have in slaying this evil of this world. That's why the Bible is called the sword. And, and, and actually, incidentally, what, that's why the Bible has been, has, has had so many translations to, to, um, co to conflate, to um, Water down. The, what the word of God actually says. That's why yeah. I always pull up the King James Bible is I believe that that's the only translation that actually still has the original um, inspired word of God. And the other translations have been completely perverted for these new churches that, that promote the pre-tribulation, promote the work salvation. It's, it's just terrible. Absolutely right. All right, Daria, great points. Let's hurry to the other callers. Notice how I talk about the NFL turns in turns into pre-tribulation post-tribulation all i know is we got a world government that's really evil coming down on us so i sure hope there's a god to help us beat it which i know there is i mean it's like the whole thing's coming true we're sitting there talking about rearranging deck chairs on the titanic man i want to go to zach in florida zach you're on the air about the national football league or the uh, losing all their uh, viewers and uh, ticket holders. Go ahead. Uh, yes, Alex. Uh, great to be on. I wanted to discuss this NFL issue and seemingly perfect timing with the North Korea issue because, make no mistake, they are um, intertwined, and I believe they're a sophisticated um, deep state, deep state uh, psyop. Uh, one major point that has not been brought up, and which I'm very surprised, I think this is going to be the first news outlet that kind of on this trail. You know, Colin Kaepernick is kind of a puppet. And he, he really doesn't have any speeches behind his actions. But you just need to look to his longtime partner and girlfriend, Nessa Diab, N-E-S-S-A, last name, D-I-A-B, who you can't even write what, you know, her, her, her background. You're talking University of Berkeley, Black Lives Matter, extreme SJW, the complete brains behind the operation. And I'm not seeing this picked up anywhere which is very important. Now, I had looked at that. His mother is like a big socialist, too. And you've got, what do you think of this guy now being investigated at West Point, saying he wants to kill capitalists, he hates America, he has a hat saying communism will win, opens up his shirt, he has Che Guevara on it. What do you make of that? I mean, it's, 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 it's obvious, and, it, and it's a plan that's referred to in the, in the intelligence communities as stratified compartmentalization, which is just essentially layers within compartments. If you could create that collage of chaos, um, you could really get, get away with a lot. Um, and I believe the waters are being chummed to assassinate the president of the United States with this race issue to divide us internally while having an outside force. No, I agree. Kill the president. That ignites the race war. Yeah, it's a, it's a plan for continuity of government. It's happening on two fronts. They thought Jade Helm was an operation or an issue. Let's, let's call this... Well, that was just a test. Helm. So let me ask you this. How is it going for them? It seems like it's blowing up in their face because the president didn't shy away. He attacked it. Yeah, I mean, that's you know, they're, they're battling. They're battling back, and the presidency is battling back. But, but, but what's being done here is a, is a slow luring and a, and a slow poisoning of the country to chum the waters to create a, to create a uh, climate where this is possible. An atmosphere for race. So where does it, what does it lead to? I agree. <laughs> well, I believe it's a plan for, for, uh, for continuity of government. Sure. So why is Soros able to get away with this? I mean, if I committed one-tenth of these crimes, I'd be in prison, and I'd deserve it. Why is this piece of garbage allowed to do this? I mean, this is insane. Well, because they got the pulse of the American people, and Hollywood is God, social media is God, these celebrities are completely brainwashed. So if they could, you know, they got George Lopez coming out on the side of North Korea, all the Hollywood stars at the award shows coming out. They got the, what really, you guys are talking about the Bible before. Unfortunately, you know, that type of thinking doesn't exist anymore. Hollywood and, and professional sports are their gods. We're stuck into the phones. And, and they, China's they using North doing. Korea as their set piece to see if they can force our capitulation in the South China Sea. Absolutely. Cause disruption here, all while having a legitimate issue overseas. You know, it's like, you know, they, they, they're not showing their hands. So obviously, they're playing them all at once. This is an all-out effort and all-out attack. This is Operation Jade Helmet. Because once they got the disruption in the states here, and we were fighting on each other's necks, and we have a legitimate enemy, they could pull off a false flag, chum the waters to assassinate the presidents, and nobody would, break up. Nobody would even blink an eye. This is a very aggressive tactic. It's in the WikiLeaks. That's what they said. 
very, very aggressive tactic. And, you know, and I, I applaud Trump and, and what he's trying to do. And like you said, he, he used he uses this as an issue to sift through some of the people that show their real colors and see who's really there at the end of the but day. But that's the issue. But what does it say to the Republicans who are going to push tax increases till they saw their candidate in Alabama defeated? Now they're acting like they're rolling over, but you never know because they're so deceptive. Uh, I believe that they're showing their true colors as well. They don't want to be showed as dupes, but they picked their side a long time ago. And, you know, Ron Paul, you know, alluded to some things about North Korea not being a real uh, a major issue. And uh, about I love Ron Paul and I like him, but he was accusing me of like wanting war. I was saying, well, I, I see both sides, but he, I'll say this. He wasn't being completely, because I kept saying, no, they are threatening to nuke us. They are. And you go, Alex, you keep saying they're threatening to attack America. Stop saying that. I didn't say that. North Korea said that. And I got all the res I got all the respect in the world for Ron Paul, but come on, this is a guy who tried to run for president. Of course, he didn't make it. I used to be a Ron Paul guy, and we all know what's going to happen in 2020. And Ron Paul knows they're backing a Rand Paul, Cory Booker, Cory Booker ticket in order to outseat to to get Trump out of there, and that's already in the works. Everybody already knows that. Sure, I know that. Uh, yeah, but 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 expanding on that, I know it's. I don't want to get into it, but the, 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 all I want to do is avert nuclear war and just have a future. Oh, but what do you think Ron Paul's thinking when he says, I love him to death, Alex, stop pushing propaganda saying North Korea has nukes. They have hydrogen bombs. He said, Alex, stop saying they've got bombs. They have the damn bombs. And look, Donald Trump won the presidency. Nobody saw it coming. His own son ran against Donald Trump. No, Donald I know. But what are you thinking the Paul thing's about? He's hedged his bet. He's based his life on something that, you know, he was also, you know, duped by. I mean, unfortunately, he has great intentions. He's doing a lot of great things. But when it comes to the real world and how the, the momentum and the clip that this thing's running at nowadays. Yeah, I get exactly. Stuff. We've got corruption on our side. But just because we've got problems doesn't mean that China and, and North Korea are good. Just because we have problems doesn't mean suddenly something over there is better than us or or is it threatening? To, why do you think North Korea is so belligerent? I get Paul's point that, oh, well, they think they have nukes. They're strong. We'll leave them alone. But they're, they're beyond saying we have nukes. They're threatening and, and shooting missiles over and threatening to detonate hydrogen bombs and saying we're going to preemptively attack you. It's imminent. I mean, if somebody said, I'm going to imminently pu I'm going to punch you in your face right now, I'd go ahead and punch them. So I don't want war, but you got some little asshole, excuse me, saying that, I'm going to kill you. What are we supposed to do? The greatest predictor of future reality is past reality. And we always heard that means we're going to nuke the hell out of them and win. Never. Well, they say never let a good crisis go to waste. So the question really, and you want to talk about people showing their true colors. We're seeing that North Korea is being this belligerent all while our country is falling apart at the same time. This is no coincidence. This is a deep state psyop. This is deeper. North Korea. Oh, I, I, it's on record that the globalists and the Clintons and the are working with North Korea, and he thinks he's working with them. That's why he's so belligerent. I agree. They're pushing. That's why they all said there's going to be a big crisis six months into Trump. We'll see what he does. They're using this to destroy Trump. I agree with you. Skip this break. Let's skip this broad break. Because i got to get these other callers. But, Zach, clearly that's what they're doing. Then what do we do to stop it? What's really going on and, and not get caught up in, get caught up in the momentum and the, in the, in the, in the, in the group think. We have to look at things how they are. Okay, what happened here in the NFL? You have an NFL quarterback who was on his way out. He wasn't starting. He was on his way out. And what city is he in? San Francisco, of course. Sanctuary. He's a paid-off, blackmailed guy. God knows what he's involved in. With a girlfriend who's a public... Black Lives Matter, University of Berkeley educated, mastermind behind this thing. They have a youthful idiot there. They ha they've been they've been you know chumming the waters for for a race war in this country. Oh, you know she's going to divorce him and take him for everything he's got as soon as he's done. He is a real bozo, oh, the clown. Oh, it's a mess. And, you know they overstepped their boundaries in this before, before, but they are brazen. They are wild, and you what, what we can't do is underestimate it because they are desperate, and that's obvious. But I believe that this is this is no coincidence that these two things are happening in conjunction. And you have a you know there, there's a million plates spinning at once, and Trump is trying to keep them all going or try to figure out what's going on. And they are creating a collage of chaos in order to distract the American public to pull off something big. And this is a last ditch effort. We need to take it very serious. You think they may be preparing to kill the president right now? 
I believe they are. I believe they're chumming the waters. And quite frankly, if you read social media and look at even the people who are supposed to look up to as role models, the entertainers, the athletes, they are calling them a, calling them a derogatory term. They all as, think yeah, the, the, that's it. They all think they're on the winning team. The former CIA deputy director and Robert Mueller's attache at the FBI, he was in both departments, said within two months he's dead. We, we are at two months next Thursday. We're eight days out on them fulfilling their promise to kill the president, trigger a race war, bring in a civil emergency, announce the elections are suspended, kill the realignment, and bring in their tyranny. And they said they'd do it. And I'm glad you've helped us refocus, Zach, because they've said they're doing this. The question is, do all these people really think that they've taken our kindness for weakness? Do they really think once a hot war starts that one sink Rob Reiner, all these guys, do they really think they've got a hope and a prayer, Zach? Well, me and you think of things like this, but we have to look at the, the people who's who are reacting like this as a maybe like an, an adolescent teenager or somebody actually entering the new ward. And you look at a spoiled teenager and you think to yourself, how could you be acting like this? How are you not grateful? Don't you see what I'm trying to do? But they can't comprehend that. And in their eyes, this was done. Not my president was chanted right after the election and how it's been done with sophistication and brilliance is sickening. This is a deep, deep, deep. They talked about it. You got the Michael Moores. You got the guys on TV. They didn't seem that worried. Don't worry. You'll be out of office. Don't worry about it. They are chumming the waters for an assassination on the president, and they should be they should be, uh, they should be ashamed of themselves that they don't have the capacity to do that because well, huh. intellectual Well, let me tell you, that, you know what happens historically. You're a smart guy. The people that lower the drawbridge, the Michael Moores, the enablers of this, they're the first people that their bosses are going to kill if this is successful. And they're, and they're not dealing with the dummy here. And like it's been said, if you aim at the prince, you better not miss. Donald Trump is not a dupe. He is strong. He's realizing what's going on. He's allowing them to show their hands, looking at their signs, looking at their bluffs. And this is a marathon, not a sprint. But make no mistake, this is dire. And they, I mean, we have to look at this not as, you know, you know, several moral issues or, you know, a single war issue. This it's is about foreign mind. multinational godless powers overthrowing the country. So it's, issues it's, at this point aren't even, and he's still delivering on the issues. I agree. It's like shameful when you realize the main forces. It's, it's so clear. This is real. And people better decide which side they're on because... I'm not afraid at all, actually. In fact, I'm quite frankly sick of playing games here. Uh, and these people want to play games. I mean, they want to really get down in the gutter. <laughs> it's going to be quite, pretty crazy. But uh, it's just the way it, it always is. But I just know this. Everybody ought to be making a list and checking it twice. Who's been naughty and nice? And Santa Claus comes visiting in the middle of the night. God bless you, Zach. Good to talk to you. But I tell you. This has aged me a lot. I can't quit thinking about this. The globalists already controlled this country. But they didn't want to control the country. They wanted to destroy it. And it's not going to happen. And America was in a coma. But as we felt their fingers wrap around our necks... We went, what, what is that? I'm going to wake up. And the globe was like, I love you. Just lay down. Oh, God, it's hard to kill. Damn, die. And we're like, wait. You, and we threw them off. And they're like, let me put my hands back around your neck. Just, no, no, stop. Just hands around the neck. It's like, it's not happening. And it's all some pissing contest of a bunch of losers. You're not going to win. Uh, look, you're not going to listen. I already see that. So I'm not going to speak to them. Just to all the viewers and listeners, they fear you because they know you're good. They fear you because they know you're strong. They fear you because they know you're committed. And I don't have to tell you what to do if they kill the president or me or anybody else. I don't have to tell you what to do. You know what to do. They've tried to, like, bill. They've tried to brand. They've tried to sell this idea that 
if there's a civil war, just kill cops. Because you kill the local cops, then the globalists come in. No, no, no. Your enemy, and this is some cop kissing exercise. The cops have been lazed, targeted to be killed in a revolution. No, 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 no. You don't kill them. You don't kill them. You kill the people that said kill the cops. And then you kill their bosses. And I'm not saying kill anybody. You're just saying kill the cops. I'm just saying, if you want to die, we're going to make sure you die. See how that works? That's why almost all the globalists have already jumped on airplanes and left. And they'll come back. They keep thinking, oh, we're about to win. They, they leave for a year, and then they come back, and then they leave, and they come back. And they're like, we're not winning. Here's more. We're not winning. <laughs> you can run to Tasmania. You can run to Kauai. You can run to the middle of nowhere in Canada. You can run to the middle of nowhere in Central Texas. You can change your name. When this all goes sideways, you're going to have a big, fat target on your ass. And I don't say that to be mean. I don't want to kill you. <laughs> you think in my life I want to kill people to feel powerful? I'm not going to kill anybody. I'm just telling you metaphysically that you think your little devil and all your devil worship and all your candy ass shit is powerful. You are weak. And once we get a hold of you, once our hands are around your neck, we're never going to stop till we rip your political guts out. In ancient times, man roamed the earth in a constant state of hunting or being hunted. Introducing Caveman, where cutting edge science meets ancient super nutrients. Secure your bottle right now at InfoWarsStore.com.